Hello and welcome to this deep dive presentation about the new functionality around code table context and filtering in Quorum Social Program Management version 702. In this presentation, we'll start by discussing the as-is scenario, that is, the state of the software prior to version 702. We'll then move on to an overview of the solution or enhancement, including descriptions of the to-be scenario, in other words, the changes in version 702. We'll then present some of the technical details of the changes, and we'll finish by telling you where you can find more information about the updates. Let's say that a code table, called Place of Residence, contains a list of residence types such as rental, shelter, and foster home. Assume that there are separate caseworker applications to deal with adult cases and child cases. If both applications use the same code table, caseworkers will see the same options in the drop-down for residence type. However, some options, such as foster home, are not relevant for adult cases, and others, such as shelter, are not relevant for child cases. Including options that are not relevant, clutters the drop-down list and allows the user to enter wrong options. In addition, the default code, which is shown as the first option, is the same for both applications. To show the relevant residence types only, developers must provide the following for each application. A separate code table containing the relevant items. A separate user interface metadata page, or view, which is part of a page, to reference the code table a facade class and associated artifacts such as domain definitions and structs to manage the code table. Implementing these artifacts is time-consuming for developers, especially when the code table is used in several applications. We want to inform you that the remainder of this presentation is aimed at developers and is therefore fairly technical. This screenshot contains an example of an unfiltered code table called Place of Residence. The code table is unfiltered and has no context applied, which means that it displays all of the items that it contains. Note that the default code is HOME. SPM version 702 enables the developer to define a context or view for a code table and apply it to the table. Once the existing code table has the context applied, it displays only the code table items that are relevant to or defined by that context. The following changes were introduced. New elements were added to the code table schema. The app schema was updated to allow the context to be specified. A new code table called application context is defined and infrastructure changes to support the feature. In situations where the end user shares a code table, the benefits of filtered tables are that they see relevant options only and can be offered a different default option for each application. Developers can reuse the code tables. They can reuse parts of UIM pages, called views, that house code tables where most of the page flow and business logic can be shared by separate applications, and only content variations are required. In the to-be scenario, developers perform the following steps. Determine the code tables that need to be reused and filtered for the different applications. Determine the default code to show at the top of the drop-down for each application. Define the context for each application that requires a view in applicationcontext.ctx. Define the context in the app file for each application and define the views for each context in the relevant code tables. These screenshots contain examples of a filtered code table in version 702. Once the context of the application is set, the code table is filtered according to the context settings and displays only a subset of the entries that it contains. Note that in this example, Home is set as the default option for both applications. Now let's discuss some of the technical details behind the enhancement. This diagram shows how the artifacts are used to produce filtered code tables. 
The developer specifies the context for the application in the app file. Each context must be defined in the ctapplicationcontext.ctx file. The developer also defines a view per context in the relevant code tables. You specify a view element for each context and list the default code and the relevant codes. If the view element is not specified, all code table items are displayed to the user as normal. CTGen generates three outputs during build time. A Java symbol file to refer to the item from your Java classes, localized property files, and SQL to load the codes and views into the code table repository. At runtime, code table filtering operates as follows. First, the user logs in. Then, the user's record is read from the user's table. Next, the application code from the user's record is used to find the application in the application code code table. Next, the app file for the application is read. Then, if the app file defines a context, the context must match an entry in the application context code table. The context is then set for the session. Next, when a page loads, the code and descriptions for the user context are retrieved from the database and shown in the dropdown on the page. In the example on this slide, PR1 is defined as the default code for the AppCTX1 context. Finally, the user selects a description and the associated code is returned as normal. Code table items are defined as they were in previous versions. However, the following optional elements are added to the code table schema to support contexts. Views, View, and Code. Note that the new elements are not supported for hierarchical code tables. CTGen creates SQL to load information about views to two new tables, Code Table View and Code Table View Code. The generated Java symbol file can be used to access the codes in your Java classes as normal. Code table context filtering has not been implemented for any out-of-the-box code tables used in the product in this release. The normal rules for merging code tables apply. The merging rules for the new elements are as follows. A view element is added if it is not in the out-of-the-box file. If the view for the context exists, the default element is replaced. A code element is added if it is not in the out-of-the-box file. The overwrite equals true attribute can be set for the view element to overwrite the out-of-the-box view, which is useful to remove items. The example on this slide shows an extract from two code table files and the results of merging these files. For a detailed example, see the section in the IBM Knowledge Center entitled Rules of Code Table Merges. You can find more information about this enhancement in the IBM Knowledge Center, specifically in the Web Client Guide and in the Server Developers Guide. This is IBM's standard legal disclaimer. And this concludes the presentation about the new functionality around code table context and filtering in Quorum Social Program Management version 702. Thank you for watching.